What's going on? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. And we're just a month away from WWDC 2014, and iPhone rumors are hot like fire right now. Well, the Apple faithful felt that special tingly feeling this week. Okay. Um, after a physical mock-up of the alleged iPhone 6 made it to the interwebs based on design drawings that were posted by Japanese magazine MacFan last month. Now there's a debate if this is the 4.7 inch or larger 5.5 inch design because there were no measurements included with the pictures and really we don't know the size of that person's hand. Now the mock-up shows substantially thinner sides with the elongated pill-shaped volume buttons. It also has the protruding camera lens similar to the current iPod Touch. And yes, this is just a mock-up and they've used these as references for making iPhone cases in the past, but let's just pretend the iPhone looks remotely close to this. I might have to put my lawn chair outside of an Apple store right now. All right, digging deeper into the potential design, Unbox Therapy also suggests the next iPhone could be as thin as the iPod Touch after putting a fifth gen touch inside an alleged 4.7 inch iPhone case from China that was a perfect fit for depth and a perfect fit for the volume buttons. Now, the rumored iPhone 6 case is even thinner than the current iPhone 5, and I know the first thing I thought when they released the new iPod Touch was, when are they going to make this iPhone as thin as this touch? Well, it could be coming soon. Now, Apple's Sapphire Crystal partner, GT Advanced, has started production and has even shipped small quantities of the material to an Apple partner in China responsible for making Sapphire covers, according to UBS Research. The report says GT Advanced still isn't at full capacity and is on schedule to install another 400 to 500 furnaces for the first quarter of 2014 and 900 to 1,000 more for the second quarter of the year. Earlier reports have indicated that GT Advanced will have the ability to produce an estimated 100 to 200 million Sapphire displays per year. That's a whole bunch of iPhones and, oh yeah, iWatches. And since we're talking about watches, Apple suppliers have already started producing the iWatch in small quantities, according to sources for the China Times. They also report that the iWatch will use a system in package design that allows a multitude of chips to be placed on a single module, allowing Apple to fit multiple sensors for the rumored watch inside its compact design. Now, Apple's iWatch is still expected to come in two different sizes, according to reports, and could appear in September, but it's all speculation as usual. Apple also did release a new product this week with updated MacBook Airs featuring faster 1.4 GHz dual-core Intel Haswell processors. Everything else pretty much remains the same spec-wise, but you'll get better battery life with the 11-inch increasing from 8 hours to 9 hours, and the 13-inch bumps up from 10 hours to 12. Geekbench benchmarks show that the new Airs show a slight performance boost from the previous models with a single-core 32-bit score and the multi-core score as well. The best part about all this, a price point $100 cheaper than the previous model, and that means you can get an entry-level notebook for $8.99 from Apple, and can it get even better than that? Well, check this out. Refurbished 2012 11-inch models are now starting as low as $5.99. Now, they're sold out right now, and I doubt there will be any stock left over, but when new models are released, you can always get a great deal on refurbs that are still under the same Apple warranty. See, that's a quick tip for you. And on to the quick bites. Hulu recently announced that this summer, people without paid Hulu access will be able to view full episodes of TV shows via the Hulu mobile app, and that applies to iPhone and iPad versions of the app. Now, the content will still be ad-supported, and a version of its Hulu app will be launching this summer that's revamped as well. We don't know what content will be available, but I've got to imagine this is a way to close the gap between their 6 million subscribers compared to Netflix's 44 million. All right, productivity fans will be happy to hear this. Google brings a pair of dedicated apps for iOS with the release of Google Docs and Google Sheets for the iPhone and iPad that are free. You're previously only able to access your documents in the Google Drive app or through the browser, but I'm loving this, and they are planning on bringing their presentation app, Google Slides, soon. And Microsoft Office for iPad apps, including Word, Excel, and PowerPoint, are finally getting printing capabilities with over-the-air printing, but editing and creating documents, well, that will still require an Office 365 subscription. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Keep sending me your emails to the Applebyte at CNET.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. And we know about the video and audio issues that have been plaguing some of you Applebiters for about the past month. So I've been told they should be resolved in the next week or so. And if they aren't, let me know and I will give myself a bad apple. Oh!
All right, thanks so much for watching. I'm Brian Tong, and we'll catch you guys next week for another Bite of the Apple. I am a panda, and I like bananas. Ugh. But I am a banana. Don't eat me, Mr. Panda. I am Ugh. the king of the jungle. I can do whatever I want. S special delivery, Brian. Whoa, whoa. Glenn, it's my couch. Oh, this is awesome, man. Here, l let me help you out with that, OK? Ugh. OK, down. All right. Here, Brian, nice. let me adjust this for you. OK. Just look back like that. Oh, oh, oh. All right, all right, that's good, that's good. Glenn, Glenn. Yeah, there, there, you go. Yeah, there you go, buddy. Good job, man. Wow. Isn't she gorgeous? Oh, yeah. <laughs> man, Glenn, <laughs> I could do a whole lot with this couch. <sighs>